Hey guys, very basic Bible. I just recorded about 10 minutes and my microphone was in the wrong place. So it would have sounded, it would have sounded like I'm talking. It wouldn't have sounded good at all. It would have sounded really quiet. So I had to start over again. I'm going to go through the book of Ruth and do a Bible study along. Remember, we're very detailed and meticulous. We're looking for little details. We're working through it. You know, like, like, we got 10 million grains of sand. What does this grain of sand look like? 999,000 to go. What does this grain look like? Now, let's compare those two grains of sand. Now, how do those compare to the ones back in the pile? I don't know. Let's look. Yes, very detailed, very meticulous. Going off rabbit trails, you know, that's just what we do in the study alongs. Share screen. Okay, close these out for now. Now it came about in the days when the judges governed that there was a famine in the land, and the man of Bethlehem in Judah went to reside in the land of Moab with his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons were Malin and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem in Judah. So they entered the land of Moab and remained there. I have talked extensively about this and went over this big time in the previous Ruth Bible study alone. Okay. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. And they took for themselves Moabite women's wives. The name of the one was Orpha, and the name of the other Ruth. And they lived there about 10 years. Then both Malin and Chilean also died, and the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the land of Moab, <coughs> because she had heard in the land of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them food. All this stuff we've talked about extensively in the past Ruth study along. So, like, four or five episodes of talking about this study extensively. So she departed from the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on to return. They went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her daughter, to daughter-in-law, go, return each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. May the Lord grant that you may find a place of rest, each one of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they raised their voices and wept. However, they said to her, No, but we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return, my daughters. Why should you go with me? One second, guy. My cat started fighting. <laughs> Had to go take the culprit upstairs, bus at him, I wrap him in a blanket, put him on the bed, not suffocated him, just wrap him up, put him there. He chills under the blanket for a little while. Eventually he crawls out and then hopefully he's calmed down. All right, here we go. Verse 12. Oh, okay, okay. Verse 10. However, they said to her, no. However, they said to her, no, but we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, return, my daughters. Why should you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Return, my daughters, go, for I am too old to have a husband. If I said I have hope, if I were to even have a husband tonight and also give birth to sons, would you therefore wait until they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is much more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has come out against me. And they raised their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Then she said, Behold, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her God. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not plead with me to leave you or to turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you sleep, I will sleep. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and worse, if anything but death separates me from you. 
When she saw that she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her about it. So they both went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they had come to Bethlehem, all the city was stirred because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? But she said to them, do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt with very bitterly with me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why do you call me Naomi? Since the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me. So Naomi returned and with her husband and with her Ruth and with her Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, who returned from the land of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. All right. Like I've said, we went over a lot of this very extensively. I drew out very important points. We talked about uh, having a husband. We talked about how important it is for ladies to have wives, uh, have husbands to get married and have kids. We talked about famine. We talked about uh, Ruth clung to her. We talked about why they weld and weep. We talked about uh, others, uh, the woman. Who is the woman? Why was the city started? We talked about stuff like that. You know, I'm going to read. I'm going to make some very general, like, because of this and that, because of this and that. Then we'll get on to chapter two. Okay. Now, it came about in the days when the judges governed. Judges is a book of the Bible, and judges were people that would rule over Israel, but not as a king. Each person, each tribe, and each family ruled themselves, but the judge was kind of like, an important person that, that, that led military campaigns and would uh, give advice and stuff like that. I came about in the days when the judges governed before there was a king, that there was a famine in the land, no water whatsoever. And a man of Bethlehem and Judah went, no rain, no rain. And a man of Bethlehem and Judah went to reside in the land of Moab with his wife and his two sons. They walked all the way from Bethlehem to, to another country because the famine was that bad. Yeah. There were roads and trade traders would walk along the roads to do trade and such. So, you know, <coughs> the name of the man was Elimelech. So a man of Bethlehem and Judah. The name of the man was his wife, Naomi, his wife. And the name of his two sons, his two sons, so the whole family, Malin and Chilean, Ephrathites of Bethlehem and Judah. Uh, Bethlehem of Ephrath. So since the city is called Bethlehem of Ephrath, they are Ephrathites. Evidently, there is a person named Ephrath or Ephra way back in the day. And uh, eventually had a city named after them, I guess. Mm -hmm. Something like that. We looked at it in, in a past. Okay. So they entered the land of Moab and remained there, the family. They went from Bethlehem to Moab. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. Husbands died, you know. They took for themselves the sons, Moabite woman and wives. The name of the one wife was Orpah, and the name of the other wife was Ruth. And they lived there about 10 years. So Malin and Chilion had Orpah and Ruth as wives. But then both Malin and Chilion died also died. Also is very important because Naomi's husband died. Then both Mala and Chilean also died. The woman was left without her two sons and her husband. In other words, her family line, gone. In other words, her chance to work, because if you're, if you're a female, it's hard to get work. Chances to work, nil. She got no family line. She, she can't have a baby now. She had daughters. Now she had two sons, but they died. They didn't leave any babies. Then Naomi arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the land of Moab because she had heard while in the land of Moab that the Lord had visited Judah, where Bethlehem is, by giving the people food. So up here, uh, no famine. There's a famine. There's no food in Bethlehem and Judah. So they went to Moab. While they're in Moab, uh, 
And she arose because she heard that in the land of Moab, the Lord had visited his people by giving them food. Sweet, the famine's over. One of my cats scratched me big time. Yeah. <laughs> famine's over, okay? So they go to return. So she departed from the place where she was and her two daughter-in-law with her so that she is Naomi. And they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. They went on the way. Could be a technical term for it. There's a, there, there's a road, you know, a trade route that goes. Yeah, everything was trade. They didn't have highways. They didn't have roads just for the fun of it. No, everything was very specific back then. Trade route. Um, went from Moab up over the Jordan, across. I mean, I mean the 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 Dead Sea, up over the Dead Sea, across the Jordan River, and then down to Bethlehem. So the way could be that road, or it could just be meaning they, they went that way. That's the way they went. <laughs> oh, oh, look at this. The New Living Translation. They took the road. Okay. Oh, they, they traveled along the road. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. So there's no more famine. We're still during the day of the judges because it's only been 10 years. We haven't heard about Samuel yet, yet the last of the judges. I'm guessing we're still in the day of judges. The famine's over. Her husband and her two sons have died. So now she's taken her daughter-in-laws, who are Moabite women, back to Judah. But Naomi said to her daughter, daughters-in-law, oh, okay, so she doesn't take them. Go return each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead, her dead husband and their dead husbands, and with me. She's dealt kindly with them. I'm not sure what that means, you know. Oh, over here, look at this new loan translation. Lord, reward you for your kindness to your husband. May the Lord grant that you may find a place of rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Okay. Well, go back and get your husband. So then Naomi kept them, and they raised their voices and wept because they were very sad. <laughs> they, they were very overly dramatic. They're going to separate, you know. However, they said, no, but we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, return, my daughters. Why should you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb? Her husband died. Then her two daughter-in-law's husband died. She isn't going to be able to make kids for a family line. She, she had sons who were going to carry on the family line. But then they died, and the daughter-in-laws evidently haven't made sons. She doesn't have any grandkids, no family line. Do I still have sons in my womb? They may be your husband. Return my daughter's go, for I am too old to have a husband. If I had hope, if I said I would have, if I would even have a husband tonight and also give birth to sons, would you therefore wait until they were grown to produce grandkids to carry on the family line? Ruth has accepted, Naomi has accepted, look, daughters, I'm not going to be able to continue the family line. I'm not going to be able to do it. I mean, look, know my daughters. For it is much more bitter for me than for you, said Naomi. Naomi thinks the hand of the Lord has come out against her. The hand of the Lord is coming against me, she said. They raised their voices and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Then Naomi said, Behold, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people, and her God returned after your sister-in-law. So she kissed her. Evidently, she left. But Ruth clung to her. In other words, Ruth didn't leave, right? Yeah. But Ruth said, don't make me plead with you to leave or to turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you sleep, I will sleep. And where your people shall be my people and your God, my God. I'm not turning back. Don't plead with me to turn back. Okay. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. So remember, up here. Uh, where is it at? May the okay. Naomi said to Ruth and Orpah, "Return each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you." Okay, to your mother's house. May the Lord grant you may find a place of rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Okay, down here, Ruth said, "Don't plead with me to leave you or to turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. Where you sleep, I will sleep. Where your people are, and your God will be my God." It says up here. Uh, 
Your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her God. Naomi said that to Ruth. Orpha evidently went back to her people and her God. Your rich people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Where you die, I will die. Where there, I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me and worse. In other words, where the Lord kill me and worse. If anything but death separates me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her about it. So Naomi and Ruth came to, they both went until they came to Bethlehem. So they were walking. Yeah, yeah. They most likely went with a large crowd of people. It would have been dangerous for two women to be traveling alone. You know, they got no car. There are no pit stops along the way. Um, even for men to travel alone would have been dangerous. I mean, there's no cops, you know. <laughs> when they come to Bethlehem, all the city was stirred because of them. Because of two people, really. That's probably why. That's another reason to assume why there's a, uh, they went with a group of people. But they could have came back and somebody, she could have said, hey, I'm Naomi. Oh, I am. Oh, you're Naomi. And then told somebody else to somebody else. And wait, 10 years ago? Wait. I remember whenever Elimelech left. Wait, Naomi's back with Elimelech? Wait, there's no Elimelech? Elimelech died? Oh, my. Well, who's that girl with her? I don't know. Oh, I found out. I think that's the daughter-in-law. Hey, somebody told me that's a daughter. And you see, you know, you know, word to get around and get stirred up that way. You know, wait, they, they, they died? Wait, why are they here alone? It could, you know, could get stirred up that way. And the women said, is this Naomi? But Naomi said to the women, do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara, which means bitter. For the Lord Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. The Almighty. In other words, God has dealt very bitterly with me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. I went away with a husband. I come back with no husband. I got no family line. Why do you call me Naomi? Since the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me. Naomi means pleasant. Okay. So Naomi returned and with her Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, who returned from the land of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem at the harvest of the beginning of the barley harvest. Beginning of the barley harvest day. Now let's see, beginning barley, 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 okay. Barley, everything's barley. Barley, barley. Were there lots of barley in Jersey? Let's see. Bible Gateway. Barley. Is that barely or barley? What is barely? Barley? The land of wheat and barley, of vines, fig trees, and pomegranates, the land of olive oil and honey. Deuteronomy 8 8. Let's see. 8. Moses is talking to the people. All the commandments I'm commanding you today show you shall be careful to do, so that you may live and increase. And go in and take possession of the land which the Lord is going to give to your forefathers. Abraham and Isaac and Jacob were promised the land of Canaan. Jacob took his family down to Egypt to survive a famine. Hey, a famine. Another famine. Famines are coming. Jacob takes his family down to Egypt to survive. They're there for centuries. Then they come back up to Canaan. The land that they were promised. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were promised that. They're obviously dead after a few centuries. But hey, they're back. Now Moses is saying, the land sworn give to your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, centuries ago. You shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years. They went roaming around the world in this, and in order to humble you, putting you to the test to know what was in your heart, whether you keep his commandments or not. He humbled you and let you go hungry, let you go hungry. Fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, nor did you make you understand the man shall not live on bread alone. But man shall live on everything that comes out of the mouth of the Lord. The clothing did not wear out, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. So that you were to know in your heart, the Lord God is disciplining you, just as man disciplined his son. Therefore, you should take the commands of the Lord God, walk in the way and fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into, okay. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of streams of water. They've been roaming around the desert for 40 years. They're being brought into the land of promise to their forefathers. Father, or father. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of streams of water, of fountains and springs flowing out in the valley of the hills. 
You need water to survive. You need water to grow crops. Today, we're like, it's water, so what? Back then, they need water for day-to-day -day survival. People would die because of no water. Have you ever heard of them dying of no water? You might have. Back then, normal, everyday things. A land of wheat and barley. A vine, fig trees, and pomegranates. A land of olive oil and honey. A land where you will eat food without shortage, in which you will not lack anything. A land whose stones are iron. So you can build large cities and large buildings uh, to store your food. You can build cisterns out of stones of iron to store your water. I mean, man, they, they're just in the wilderness, you know? In Egypt, everything was given to them. Uh, I don't, they might have had to farm, but they, you know, they were given a good land, I guess. Yeah. But here, they get to do it themselves. They're brought out of Egypt, across the desert, into a land whose stones are like iron. With, uh, you will eat food without storage. Pretty cool, huh? Barley is one of those things. Vine, fig trees, pomegranates, barley and wheat. Okay. And they came to Bethlehem, and they're coming to the land which they're promised. That land which Moses gave to them. Remember, Moses, oh, remember? Moses lived many, many years before the time of the judges. Okay. There's Moses, then there's Joshua, then you got judges, judges, judges. Moses is a leader. Joshua is a leader. Joshua dies. You start getting judges as leaders. Remember, there's no king over everything. They've all got their own land. Now, during the time of judges, they came to this place that God has given them at the beginning of the barley harvest. One of the many things. Okay, let's see. Okay. Now the flax and barley were ruined, for the barley was in ear, and the flax was in bud. So when they're when they're in the land of Egypt, let's see. 931, the plague of boils, the plague of hail. I behold about this time tomorrow, I God will send down very heavy hail, such as has not been seen from the day in Egypt. Okay. Send word, bring in whatever livestock and whatever you have in the field for safety. Every person, animal in the field, when the hell comes down, they will die. Yikes. All right. Oh, and his livestock died because some of them didn't fear the Lord. Now, the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand toward the sky so that hell may fall. Let's see. As soon as I go out of the city, I'll spread out my hands and send it to the service. I will know that you fear the Lord. Now, the flax and barley were ruined, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was in bud. But from the hail, the wheat and the stalk were not ruined, for they ripened late. So Moses left the city from his meeting, which was so evidently in Egypt. They also had um, barley. So that must have been a common thing. If it was from Egypt, is way down here. You go across some wilderness, and you get up. Actually, it's not too far to get from Egypt to the promised land, but God had to just wander around in the desert for a long time. So evidently, barley was a common thing. Oh, yeah. Again, if someone consecrates Leviticus 27.16, so we're a different context away from Egypt. Again, if someone consecrates the Lord part of the field of his property, okay, you're going to give the Lord part of your property, then your assessment shall be proportionate to the seed needed for it. A homer barley seed at 50 shekels of silver. Okay. Then your assessment shall be proportionate to the seed needed for it. Oh, wait. Control F. Look at the bottom left of the screen. Type in B A R L E Y. One of one match. All right. Barley. If someone consecrates his house as holy to the Lord, the priest shall assess it as either good or bad. Okay. Uh, now, if an animal control F assess. 
Oh. So evidently assessment for your female, your assessment, um, 15 shekel of silver, 10 shekel of silver. Okay, the assessment could be presented as the means of the one who vows the pre show assessment. Okay, so you're assessing things. You're, I think it's a, a servant up here. You know, what's the value of a servant? How much should the servant be sold for? How much should the servant be paid? I mean, the servant is working, you know. Um, you need to pay the servant and if you take if a servant goes from one house to another house well this person's losing a servant so you pay the money uh, you know so for the loss of the servant you give them money how much is the servant going to make you need to know that um they present an animal they're going to assess the animals either good or bad okay so uh add a fifth to it of the assessment, okay. If you want to redeem it, if you got to buy it, if you want to buy it back. So they're talking about assessing it, paying money for it. Someone consecrates a house as a priest assesses it for the money. Okay, if you want to buy the house back, you need to add a fifth to the assessment. So in other words, to get more expensive. So the barley control F B A R L E Y. Oh, there it is. As someone consecrates a field. Then you shall assess the fill shall be the proportion a uh, homer barley at 50 shekels of silver. So that's the measurement. A homer barley evidently costs 50 shekels of silver. What's an omer? That's a measurement. What's a shekel? That's a measurement of money. So you got a cup of barley, you got a half a cup of barley, you got a gallon of barley. Well, back then it was an omer. Omer? That's kind of omer or homer, homer. Let's see what the H says. Oh, about 7.7 .7 cubic feet or 0.22 cubic meters. That's how much barley. Okay. That much barley seed at 50 shekels of silver. That's what the assessment shall be for the uh, the field. I'm not sure exactly how this works, but the main point is barley. It, that's that's a thing. Okay. It doesn't say uh, vines, it doesn't uh, grapes, it doesn't say wheat, so, and barley. So barley was pretty. I mean, there might be somewhere in the law where it talks about vines and spot, but even barley is a big thing. Numbers. The man shall bring his wife to the priest and shall bring as an offering for her a tenth of an ephah, another measurement of barley. Okay. A land of wheat and barley binds over. That's the first one we looked at up here. Deuteronomy 8. eight. So you see the barley, it's not the most common thing ever, but okay, look at it. Behold, I had a dream, a loaf of barley. So they made barley out of bread. This is my favorite thing. Behold, I had it just to read, just for fun, okay? Okay, where is it? Now, on the, okay, I'm sorry. This is getting off topic, but it's just, okay. Now, on the same night, it came about, the Lord said to Gideon, Arise, go down against the camp, for I have handed it over to you. But if you are afraid to go down, go with pure your servant down to the camp, so that you so sneak down to the camp in the middle of the night, so that you will hear what they say. And afterward, you will have the courage to go down against the camp. So he's going to go. So he said, uh, go down against the camp and destroy it. But if you're afraid, sneak down there. Okay. So he went down with pure his servant to the outpost of the army that was in the camp, just the outpost. Now, the Midianites, the Amalekites, and all the people of the east were lying in the valley as numerous as locusts. No wonder he was afraid. If you're afraid to go down. Um, and their camels were without number, as numerous as the sand on the seashore. That's why they're afraid. That's a lot of people. When Gideon came, behold, a man was relating a dream to his friend. So he sneaks up to the outpost. It says he went down with the search just to the outpost, the extremity of the battle formation. Okay. When Gideon came, behold, a man was relating a dream to his friend. So he's that close to the enemy. He's afraid, but he's getting that close to the enemy. And, and, and the man said, behold, so here's the good part. Behold, I had a dream. A loaf of barley bread was tumbling into the camp of Midian, and it came to this tent and struck it. So it fell and turned it upside down, the tent collapsed. How big of a barley, how big of a loaf of bread? A loaf of bread? You know, maybe it was a wheel. Maybe, maybe it was 
the tumbling like like we see like uh like kind of like a football or a football shape i don't know uh, it's a loaf a loaf uh, a giant marker like the way it's marked a giant uh, i'm still all right Behold, I had a dream. A loaf of barley was tumbling into the camp of Midian. That's the main camp that they're staying in. The dude's saying, hey, there's a loaf of bread that tumbled into the camp we are at. It hit a tent, and the tent fell down. And it turned it upside down. The whole tent collapsed. I had a dream. Down the mountain, comes the, or the hill, comes the thing, and it hits one of our tents, and it falls down. His friend replied, dude, you're nuts. What in the world are you talking about? That's the weirdest dream I've ever heard. Were you smoking some of the? You had a little too much liquor. It's a little too much strong drink. Yeah, yeah. They they had wine and strong drink. You had a little too much strong drink. Here's what the friend said. His friend replied, "This is nothing." Now remember, Gideon is listening. He's like so close he can hear them talking about this. He's on the outpost of the camp, right? Like he's on one side of a, a tent. I imagine him standing on one side of a tent. And they're on the other side, like sitting around a campfire, and he's like listening. If the, if one of them said, "Okay, cool," took three steps, there's Gideon. He kill him. So cool. I mean, he's like right there. Gideon's listening to this. The friend replied, "This is nothing other than the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel." How in the world does that servant know? How do you know what a loaf of bread is? Did God tell him? Like God speaks and God speaks in mysterious ways. God just spoke to Gideon through a dream that Gideon didn't have, through a man Gideon never even saw. This man doesn't know Gideon. I mean, these people were coming to attack Israel. They knew Gideon was the man in charge of Israel. But they knew that they were going to easily defeat Israel. They knew that. Actually, I'm not even sure if they knew Gideon was a man in charge. Okay, okay. We're getting way off track from barley. But hey, a loaf of barley was a normal thing to them. God has handed over to Gideon, Midian, and all the kings. That's just a fun story. It's like, hey, dude, I had this dream. Yeah, this loaf of bread came down to down. The other guy's like, that surely is Gideon. Like, what? Like, how can you tell? But hey, a loaf of barley. Okay. So Naomi turned, hey, Ruth. So Naomi turned, and with her, and with her, Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, who turned from Lana Moab, and they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of Barley Harvest. Look at this, Ruth chapter 2, Barley. Ruth chapter 2, Barley. Chapter 3, Barley. Chapter 3, Barley. Second Samuel, and he has Barley there. Go and set it on fire. Oh, don't set the Barley on fire. Let's see, barley, barley, barley. So barley is a pretty common thing. Okay. So to us, like, uh, who cares about the barley herbs? To them, that was their life. They needed barley for food. We need the grocery store for food. We just need to go look in our pantries. You know, if we start running out of food, now some people are homeless. They have food shelters. People give them food a lot. I live in Austin, lots of concrete in the city. I live near Austin, right next to it. Lots of concrete in the city of Austin. Lots of homeless people in their overpasses. They don't farm. They just get food from people who give them food, you know, out the windows or whatever. Uh, they get food from homeless shelters and stuff. You know, there are some countries in the world, though, where people do still farm, not for necessarily for a living, because there are people in the USA who farm for a living. They don't farm necessarily for a living. They don't necessarily farm because it's fun. They farm because if they don't, they will die of food, of not having food. There are still people like that in the world. Probably people in the Middle East like that, you know, so where, where this is taking place. Um, so yeah. <laughs> they came to Bethlehem. So because of a famine, they left. Because of the famine, they came back. Was it really that common to be walking around back and forth, back and forth, back and forth? I mean, was it? Remember, remember, um, 
I'm gonna look up some stuff. Uh, let's. I'm just gonna look up the word walk. Let's just see, you know, the imitator of the business of the Lord walked in the garden. Enoch walked with God. That means he was, Noah walked with God. That means he was a righteous man. Shem the walk backwards, the wall rise and walk. Full chapter. So Abram got, went up from Egypt to the Negev. That's a really far ways. He and his wife and all belonged with him and Lot with him. So they left from Egypt and went to the Negev. Okay. Just like is a normal everyday thing. Look at this. Uh, oh, chapter 11. Abram. Now Terah took his son Abram and Lot the son of Haran, his grandson, and his daughter's son-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife. And they departed from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. They got up and left. No, oh, it's like five miles down the road. No. It was a long ways. They went as far as Haran and settled there. The days of Terah were 205 and Terah died in Haran. So they got up and left and went there. Okay. So they're in Haran. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country, from your relatives. So Abram went away as the Lord had spoken to him with Lot with him. Abram was 75 years when he departed Haran. Okay, so now he's leaving Haran. So first he leaves Ari the Chaldee and goes to Haran. Now he's leaving. Uh, they set out for the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land as far as side of Shechem. Okay, so now they went all the way to the land of Canaan. So at least this guy Abram's walking all over the place. Uh, there was a famine in the land. So Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a time because the famine was severe in the land. There we go. They're saying that uh, Ruth and Naomi did. Am I saying Ruth and Naomi copied Abram? I'm not saying they copied Abram. I'm saying they did the same thing Abram did because there's no, there's no food. So they left. So, yes, it's just kind of a common thing. Let's see. He went on his journey from the Gev as far as Bethel to the place where his tent was at first between Bethel and Ai. So, so they went from the Gev. Uh, they went up from Egypt to the Gev. Evidently, the famine went away. The famine went away. The Gev as far as Bethel. They went from the Gev to Bethel. So they're still walking. They're just roaming around. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, now Lot leaves, Lot went somewhere, raise your eyes and look from the place. God's telling Abram to do this. Northward, southward, for all the land, I will make your descendants. Where was it at? Oh, right here. Arise, walk about in the land through its length and its width, for I will give it to you. He's not talking about like a piece of land, like, hey, a few acres. No, he's talking about a huge land, many, many, many square miles of land. God's like, get up and walk around in it and go look at it. What? Many, 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 many square miles? Look at a map real quick. Abram's journey. Images. Journey of Abram. It's kind of hard to see, so look close. Journeys of Abram. It's, there's the Ur of the Chaldees. He walks up here. There's Haran. Okay. Abram walks down here. He goes all the way down to Egypt. That's still a journey of Abram. Look at the journey of Isaac in blue. Isaac goes up here. He goes back. Isaac's walking around. Journeys of Jacob. Jacob is walking around. Oh, that's journey of Jacob. I'm sorry. I thought Isaac didn't go far, actually. Isaac does not go up to Haran to Paddan Aram. Isaac doesn't go up there, but he sends a servant up there and says, hey, go up there and get a wife for my son from our family. Remember, they left Haran, so they want to go back to Haran to get a wife. So go back to there and get a wife for my son. <laughs> I'm sorry, Abram sends his servant to go get a, a son for Isaac, a wife for Isaac. Jacob's son is named Isaac. Jacob tells his, Jacob tells his own servant, go to Haran, to Paddan Aram, to get a wife from his son Isaac. Well, then later, so Isaac has a wife from there. 
Then later, Isaac's son, Jacob, leaves and runs up there to get away because his, his brother wants to kill him. But then he goes, I mean, see, they're walking all over the place. This is normal for them. You know, normal, everyday stuff. Walking around. Maybe not normal every day, but I mean, you could see that they that they, they, they walked a lot. Where was Moab uh, in Judah? So they entered the land of Moab. Where was Bethlehem in Moab? How far was it? Bethlehem, Moab. Bethlehem to Moab map. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Doot, doot. Okay. Oh, the story of Ruth. Uh, the Bible journey, Ruth journey. Doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. So if you looked at our other map, um, you're like, BJ, where is this in relation? Okay. Let's type in Abram. Journey. Let's do that again. Google search. Go to images. So, Haran, Ur. That's what we talked about. Remember, he went to Haran, then he went to Egypt, then he goes here's Canaan, where God promised him. Okay, so he's walking all that way. That's a long way. Where Ruth and Naomi journey is in Canaan, right here. Ruth and Naomi are in Canaan. There, you can barely see it. Is a little is a dead sea. We go back over here. Dead sea. There, you can see it right there. Over here, you got the dead sea. Over here, right there's the dead sea. There it is, a little bigger. So boop boop. Okay. So it's not that far. Not as far. Okay. You still wonder, BJ, how far is it? Okay. How far is it? Uh, Moab to Bethlehem. Noab. Moab. How many miles from Moab to Bethlehem? How long would it take to walk from Moab? Let's see. How many miles? Let's check. 7,074. That's because there is a Moab in Utah, in North America. All right. In the Bible. All right. We went to that one earlier, and I discovered it says about 50 miles. Let's see if this one tells us the same. Do, 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 do. Okay, control F. Mild, not found. Okay. X that out. Aaron, 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 Dan is not depart. Baptist bulletin. Moving to Moab was a limit like wrong to move to Moab. Action artistry. Bible.org. Let's see. Maybe we can look some commentaries at Bible.org. Bob Diffenbaugh. Bob Deffenbaugh graduated from Dallas Theological Seminary with his theologic, theologic CHM in 1971. He is a pastor, teacher, and elder at Community Bible Chapel okay, in Richardson, Texas. Okay. Control F. And tell us how many miles. Here's what we do. Some of you might be like, BJ, I don't really care. Some of you are very interested in this. Okay. X. Uh, 
that's for him. Okay, move over to Moab. We'll, we'll do this. We'll do Bethlehem. Of course, this is modern day, but we're assuming everybody's about in the same place, okay? Directions two. Whenever we looked at the map, it was, we got, it was somewhere around here, I think. They had to cross a little stream. There's a wadi, which is a stream. If, you know, assuming that map is correct, we're just going to hit right there. There we go. So they're going on the highway. All right, 160 kilometers. Kilometers. I, I don't, I mean, some people know miles. 114 miles. Okay. Might be less, might be more. You know, look at all that. Yeah, they, they might have just been able to go. They probably would have went on some trade route where they went to the water quickly and then went around the water. And then they were in Moab somewhere. Whoa, that's cool. Uh, what a lot of it looks like over there. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah, now that's how it would have looked in a Bible time because there were no cities. So look at all that, man. All right, 100 miles. Hmm. I don't know, is that satisfying? I'm not sure. But I mean, they walked that far. That's why I would assume they went with groups. They had to have a lot of food to make it that far. They had to have a lot of water to make it that far. They couldn't just put it on the back. I mean, they could have, I guess, 100 miles. Uh, there are people, there's a trail around here near Austin, uh, 26 miles. People talk about how they did it in a day. You know, some people say I did it in two days. In other words, they walked and they stopped. They walked, they hiked and they stopped. They hiked and they stopped. They hiked and then they camped for the night. Then they hiked. And they stop two days. Okay, some people they do it in one day. They hike it all in one day. I mean, okay, you know, a hundred miles plus. That'd be pretty. Be pretty hard to do in a day, you know. Probably had a lot of people. Probably had food with them. They could hunt and fish. Probably. I mean, now everyone back then could. Could housewives do that? Housewives do that? I'm not sure. I don't think so. They were they were they were used to getting food from farmers. They were either farmers themselves or they bought food from farmers. You know. Some trades and the new stuff. They probably went with some. That's my guess. They went with some. Guys. So, I mean, it wasn't that to us, this would be weird to be walking from country to country because of famines. To them, not that uncommon. Not super common. It's not like every week they were going to a different country, but it's not unheard of. It's pretty normal, you know. So. And they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. Well, that's good. Finally, chapter two. Finally, in chapter two, done like four or five videos. Here, real quick, let's read a little bit of chapter two. Now, Naomi had a relative of her husband, a man of great wealth of the family of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And maybe Naomi could marry Boaz. But like Naomi said, if I had a husband, had a family tonight, and then had a kid, are you going to wait around until that kid's grown to have a baby with him? Probably not. Ruth the Mo okay, so, and Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, please let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain following one in whose eyes I may find favor. And she said to her daughter, to her, go, my daughter. What in the world does that mean? That was a lot of, why did it tell us about Boaz? This, this, you, you would think it would have said something about Boaz. So she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reaper. She had happened to come up to the portion of the field belonging to Boaz, who was a family of a little life. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Let's see. Playlist, not verse by verse, uh, Bible study line seven, it says, but often it'll say seven and I only see six videos, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, one, one, two, six, one, seven, three, thirteen, 
Oh, uh, part one and part two. One, one through 13 again, because I had to stop in the middle of that one. One, 14 and 15, a whole hour and 14 minutes. One, 15 through 21. But yes, one through 13 and four, 13 through 17. This one's going to be called one through all of chapter one, and then a little bit at the end of chapter one about them walking, and then chapter two, one through whatever. I'm not sure. An hour, an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and nine minutes, 34, 30. So that's an hour and seven minutes. Hour and 18. Uh, man, we got a lot of time spent on chapter one. So try to go quicker through chapter two because I assume that some of the stuff we learned in chapter one is known to you. Please forgive me. All right, here we go. I wish I could look at chapter one and chapter two. So Naomi returned, and with her, Ruth the Moabite. Let's see this. No matter what it changes on me. Okay, right there. All right. There. Okay. Now. So I just want Firefox right there. Do, do. Right. There you go. Parallel Bible. Keeps going up, doesn't it? No matter what I do, it's like. I'm sorry, guys, if it's taking so long. This is what my wife was talking about. You need an editing thing. All right, we're almost to the next chapter. So I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty, says Naomi. Why then do you call me Naomi? Since the Lord has testified against me as, and the Almighty has afflicted me. She really thinks God's against her. Because Killed her husband because she doesn't have a family line. She's going to die and her name is going to be wiped from memory. So Naomi returned and with her Ruth the Moabite, her daughter in law who returned from the land of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. So they're already in Bethlehem. So it's saying when they got there. So they're already there. They talked to the women. She said, Don't call me Mar Naomi, call me Mara. And it's saying, Okay, it now editorially. At the beginning of the barley harvest. Okay. Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, the family of the family named Boaz. He was a uh, man of great wealth. That's good, I guess. Of the family of Elimelech, his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, please let me go to the field, please. So Ruth the Moabitess, she's not Jewish, said to Naomi, who is Jewish, please let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain, following one in whose eyes I may find favor. She said to her, go, my daughter. And she left. Now, remember, they came at the beginning of the barley harvest. Naomi very bitter. She's got nothing. But there is a relative, a wealthy man. And Ruth just happens to she left and went and gleaned in that field after the reapers, and she happened to come to the portion of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, so Boaz is in Bethlehem, and he comes out. He goes to the field, may the Lord be with you. And they said to him, may the Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servant who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? I bet it's Ruth. 
and the servant in charge of the reaper's replied, she is a young Moabite woman who had returned with Naomi from the land of Moab. Uh-oh. Up here, we're told he's a husband. Naomi had a relative of her husband, a man of great wealth. That's all we're told about Boaz. His name is Boaz. Uh, she happened to come to the portion of the blind Boaz, who is a family, who is of the family of the land. But, okay, okay. May the Lord be with you. And they said, may the Lord bless you. That could be pious talk. Do we know if Boaz is like a righteous, a loving dude? Or is he going to do the right? She's a Moabite. She's not Jewish. Why would you let her be here? There's a rule in Deuteronomy. It says, do not let a Moabite come into the assembly of the Lord. Boaz could easily look at this and, and take this as, okay, if we're not to let a Moabite, coming to the assembly of the Lord. She shouldn't be coming with us. She shouldn't be here with us. She needs to leave. She's a Moabite. It's no good. May the Lord bless you, but oh, she's a Moabite. Oh, get her away. That could happen. There are people like that in the Bible. There are people like that today. Then Boaz said, uh, whose young woman is this? A servant says she is the young Moabite, woman who returned with Naomi from the land of Moab. And she said, okay, so the servant is still talking because there's a parenthesis. Quotation marks. <laughs> there's a quotation mark. And Ruth said, please, she doesn't know her name, his, her name, I guess. The servant, the servant in charge of the reapers replied, she is a young Moabite woman who has returned with Naomi from the land of Moab. And she said, please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she closed parenthesis. Uh, quotation marks. So she came and has remained from the morning until now. She has been sitting in the house for a little while. She's been here all day. She's tired. Then Boaz said to Ruth, oh, so now Boaz went and found Ruth. So Boaz heard what the servant said. Now Boaz went and found Ruth. Listen carefully, my daughter. Do not go to glean in another field. Furthermore, do not go on from this field. Don't, don't, don't go to another field, but don't even leave this one. But join my young women here. Hmm. Okay. Keep your eyes on the field. Here, let's go ahead and just close that. Oops. Keep your eyes on the field, which they read, the young women, my young women. Stay in my field with my young women. Are his young women? Does he have like a harem? Are they his daughters? What does he mean by young women? We'll discover it. Don't worry. Keep your eyes on the field which they reap and go after them. Indeed, I have ordered the servants not to touch you. When you are thirsty, go to the water jars and drink from what the servants draw. Maybe this guy's, maybe this is a good guy. He's not going to be like, hey, you're a Moabite. Sorry. Speaking of water. <clears throat> then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said, she fell, like, ow, just bowed down, and said, why have I found favor in your sight that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? Boaz replied to her, I'm a foreigner. Why are you taking notice of why have I found favor in your sight? Boaz replied to her, all that you have done for your mother-in-law after the death of your husband has been fully reported to me. All she's done, all she did was stay with her. All we know is that Ruth said, I'm not going to leave you. That's all we know. That's it. That's all. Maybe there was more. Maybe, there, maybe Ruth staying with the mother-in-law was good enough. Maybe all you have done is um, since you stayed with her. Maybe that entails you stayed with her so that she wasn't lonely, so that she wouldn't have to travel by herself. So that uh, uh, you could help with the food, you could help with the, you'll go get water when they need water on the trip. Uh, maybe back then, maybe when you were in the field, we heard that you, in Boab, Moab, maybe when you were in Moab, uh, uh, if you lived with her, you must have done good things for her, just, just in general, stuff like that. Um, how you left your father and your mother and the land of your birth, because she did. She could have went back to her father and mother. Remember in chapter one, Naomi's like, hey, Go back to your mother's house. 
and go back and find yourself a good husband. But you left all that and came to a people that you previously did not know. Who are the people? Judah. But I replied, all that you have done, I've heard about. And how you left your father and mother. How you came to a people you didn't know. She came to Judah. May the Lord reward your work. And may your wages be from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wing you have come to take refuge. Ruth has come to take refuge from the God of Israel. That's what Boaz seems to think. Then she said, then Ruth said, I have found favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and indeed spoken kindly to your servant, though I am not like one of your female servants. I'm not a Judean. But, but may your wages be from the Lord anyway, uh, under whose wing you've come to the Lord to take refuge under Judah. You know, a people you previously didn't know, Boaz said. But Ruth said, though I'm not like one of your female servants. In the middle time, Boaz said to her, come here that you may eat of the bread and dip your piece of bread in the vinegar. So she sat beside the reapers and he served her roasted grain and he ate and she ate and was satisfied and had some left. That's pretty cool. It's like, hey, you can even come and eat with me. Foreigners, back in the day, no eating with each other. When she got up to glean, Boaz commanded his servant saying, let her glean among the sheep and do not insult her or harm. Because they know she's a Moabite. They know she's a foreigner. He's commanding his servant, hey, do not mess with her. Also, you are to, this is good, you are to purposely slip out from her some grain from the bundles and leave it, though that she may glean. Do not rebuke her. Leave some pieces of grain on the ground. You know, oops, I dropped some. Oh, I guess somebody else will pick that up. Oh, there's Ruth. Hey, Ruth, I dropped some grain for you. That's pretty, man, Boaz is like, dude, look, I'm giving her food. I'm giving her shelter. I'm letting her stay here. You don't shelter. Shelter like to take a break in. Uh, she lives, evidently. Evidently, she had a house to come back and live in, I'm guessing. Hmm. Where are her and Naomi living? I don't know. I guess Naomi's uh, house from her husband's still there. Hmm. Same with other relatives. Maybe they bought it. Maybe Naomi still had money. They could buy a house. I don't you know, it did talk about how Boaz was a man of great wealth, and it hasn't told us that <clears throat> that Naomi and Ruth are not of great wealth, but maybe they're not. You know, we are getting close to the end of chapter two. Okay. Oh, uh, so she gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned. And it was about an ephah of barley, let's see, about one cubic foot, okay? A cubic foot of barley, that's actually a good amount. It's actually, I mean, it doesn't seem like, like if we packed up a cubic foot of barley, you know, yay big, um, we think that's not very much. I think that's actually a pretty good amount. Okay? Especially if you were just picking up what people like dropped on accident or, you know, purpose on purpose. Some phone getting called from Kelly from marketers. Telephone marketeers. Are they like mouseketeers? I'm sorry, the three musketeers. Um, okay, okay. Back to the Bible. How long have we been going? Hour and six minutes. Didn't I have to stop at one point in our question? My cats? I think so. <laughs> All right. We'll get done with the overview of the chapter then. We'll start next time going through it meticulously. Kind of like the way that we, um, if you're new, the way that at the very beginning, whenever I um, went through very meticulously and looked at, uh, kind of, kind of, I looked at other Bible passages and then we looked at a map and we were trying to figure out how far it was. And I kind of did that haphazardly. That's what we'll do next time for all of chapter two. It'll take a while. She picked it up. She picked up the barley, the F of barley. And went into the city, and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. She also took, she, Ruth, also took some out and gave to Naomi what she had left after she was satisfied. Oh, I see. She went to the city, 
the mother-in-law saw what Ruth had. So Ruth didn't keep it to herself. She took some out. After Ruth had eaten, she gave some to her mother-in-law. Okay. So it doesn't say they lived together, but they probably did. Okay, let's look over here. She carried it back into town and showed it to her mother-in-law, Ruth. Her well, mother-in-law. Ruth also gave her the roasted grain that was left over from her meal. Mm, okay. So I guess maybe what Ruth had eaten earlier. Uh, come here. Uh, and had some left. Come here that you may eat bread. Boaz said to Ruth, come here that you may eat some of the bread and dip. So Ruth sat beside the reapers, and Boaz served Ruth roasted grain, and Ruth ate and was satisfied and had some left, some roasted grain left. Uh, so Ruth gathered the barley all day when she beat it out an entire basket full. A basket was about an F of point four. About 26 quarts. That sounds like a lot. About 30 pounds. Effa was about 22 liters of bullet. One cubic foot or 0 0.03 cubic meter. Right here. Okay. The reason I'm so confused is because I would think a cubic foot like like one foot by one foot by one foot. I would think that would be a lot more than 22 liters or uh, 20 quarts. Hmm. I'm very curious, but we're gonna keep going to get to the end of the chapter. She picked it up and went to her market. Her mother-in-law then said to her, where in the world did you glean and where did you work? Whoa, how do I know that? May he who took notice of you be blessed. She's pretty happy. I'm guessing that's a lot of barley. Okay. Where did you glean today and where did you work? May he who took notice of you be blessed. Boaz was one, of course. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked and said, the name of the man with whom I work today is Boaz. Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, it's still telling, I mean, I mean, very, I think it's, like her daughter-in-law, the Moabite. The, she's the one who's not there. She came from a foreign land. I think it's really trying to stretch that. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I think it's really trying to stretch this is a foreigner. She's just her daughter-in-law. She's not her actual daughter. She's not her son who can turn on the family line. Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, may he be blessed of the Lord who has not withdrawn his kindness from the living and from the dead. Very poetic. Again, Naomi said to her, the man is our relative. He is one of our redeemers. Then Ruth the Moabite, Ruth the Moabite said, furthermore, he said to me, oh, so now, so now they're talking back and forth. So, um, so, hey, here's some food, mom, uh, mother, mom and law, <laughs> then uh, Naomi, whoa, where did you glean today? May he take notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law, there was a man named Ruth. So Naomi said to Ruth, may the Lord bless this guy. Again, Naomi said, the man is our relative. He's one of our redeemers. Then Ruth said, hey, not only did he let me glean with him, he said to me, you are to stay close to my servants until they have finished all my harvest. Then Naomi said to back to her daughter-in-law Ruth, it is good, my daughter, that you go out with this young, with his young woman, so that others do not assault you in another field. So Ruth stayed close by the young women of Boaz in order to glean until the end of the barley harvest and the wheat harvest. And she lived with her mother-in-law. Okay, so she did live with her mother-in-law. Okay. All right, guys. We're done. We're good. We looked at it. We went through the chapter. Went through chapter one, chapter two, but now we're going to go by and pick it very meticulously. Some things that I noticed that we should talk about. Glean. 
So you have A. There's a tiny A you can't see. Leviticus 19.9. Leviticus 19.10. Leviticus 23.22. Deuteronomy 24.19. Ruth 2 verse 7. <laughs> we can look at those. What in the world is going on? Uh, one in whose eyes I may, find, I may find favor. What the heck does that mean? Uh, why was he? Why did it point out that he's a man of great wealth? That he's of the family of Elimelech. Why does that matter? Um, Boaz came from Bethlehem. Remember where Bethlehem was? Uh, reapers. 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 I guess, I guess we know what reapers. The Grim Reaper. A reaper is a dude with a, the Grim Reaper has a has a stick with a blade on it. It's called a scythe. The Grim. What is a reaper? Some of you are like, I know exactly what a reaper is. Some of you, are, oh, those are farming type people. Others are like, I don't know what a reaper is. Please let me glean and gather among the reapers, among the sheaves. Lots of farming talk. Reapers are get uh, use. They got a stick with a metal uh, razor around the end of it, and they go, whoosh, and it knocks all the grain down. Please let me glean after the reapers among the sheaves. Sheaves are grains of wheat. See, there's a lot of talk about farming stuff. Uh, she's a Moabite woman. Uh, John, my young women, keep your eyes on the field which they reap. My young women, uh, we um, found favor in. Why have I found favor in your sight? You should take notes of me because I'm a foreigner. I mean, we can talk. We talked about that already. We can talk about it more. Um, at mealtime, Boaz said, "Come and eat bread with me, with, and dip your piece of bread in the vinegar." Okay, you could have just said, "Hey, come have some food with me." I mean. Why well, say it that way? It must mean something. Um, purposely slip out some grains and those that she may take them. Effa. We'll figure out this whole Effa thing. How big is an Effa really? I mean, no, no. I, I, I believe that this is correct and that these are correct. 30 pounds is a, a, a pound. Is that, is that a cubic foot? Is that 22 quarts? Well, we'll, we'll look at that a little more. Carry it back to town. There she is walking more. Of course, she's just in the field, but she's got to carry back. That's a lot of walking. They were buff back then. Carried 30 pounds. What what women could say from a field carry it back into town? I mean, I mean, it could have been miles. Man, you know. Probably had help. Maybe she had help. You know, she might have been with other people. Maybe some of the ladies went. I mean, why is she doing all this alone? Evidently not. She's going with other people. See, we could talk about all this. Um, and their conversation back and forth there, you know. Yeah, they, they, they're, they're, there's a lot to talk about, and even more that will pop into old BJ's noggin. As we're going, stuff will just happen. You know, we already have seven videos. Now we'll have an eight. The escape, stop, share. Okay, guys, that's good for today. Now off to fix me some food and watch the Remnant Radio. They're doing their church history session. You want to go watch the Remnant Radio if. If this is years from now and the Remnant Radio is still there, go watch them. If they're not still there, go watch your old videos. If they are still there and they still have old videos, go either way. The Remnant Radio is good stuff. Okay. Much like me, I'm the whole very basic Bible guy. Try to remain very basic in just the Bible. They are kind of like very basic Christian life in general, guys. Very basic Christian life in general. They do have stances on theology, which... On this, I don't really talk about that much, you know. They do have particular stances. But I like them because they remain open, fair, and balanced. They discuss it. They get guests and stuff. If you're like BJ, I have no idea about Ruth chapter 2. BJ, I really want to learn more now. Go to the playlist entitled uh, Matthew, not verse by verse, uh, quick read through Matthew. Go to that playlist. Okay. Here we go. Share screen. If you're like BJ, I want to learn about this Ruth stuff now. Gotta wait until the gray boxes turn. Oh, look, that the remnant radio. There we go. I'm gonna go watch that. Uh, in a few minutes. Okay, here we go. Playlists. 
not voice by first eight minute quick read. If you're looking like BJ, these are way too long. I just want to go even what I did just now through chapter two was way too like I talked a lot about chapter one and then I went through chapter two a little quicker. Even if that's too long for you, not verse by verse, eight minute quick read. I have a timer on my phone. I set the timer for eight minutes and I talk. So 831, 852, 910, 852, 840, 838. 30 videos. All the, oh, the last one, 332. You want to hear six minutes and something because I forgot to set the timer. 652. So spend the first first few seconds talking about random stuff about my channel. Then we read with minimal commentary. Then at the end, when the timer goes off, I say, okay, guys. And here's what I tell you to do. If you want to learn more about the Matthew quick read, because I go through it so quick, or for purposes of today, you want to learn more about Ruth chapter two that I went through so fast, show more right here. Want to follow up control. want to follow up and or get more information on some scripture, check out these verse-by-verse -verse resources. Thenarabath.com, verse-by-verse. Generationword.com, slash resources. EFIndia.com, verse-by-verse. BTEministries.com, Bible study audio. Free Bible commentary, Old Testament. Free Bible, New Testament. Ancient faith podcast, whole council. Ancient faith doesn't have all the Bible yet, but um, it's getting there. All the stuff on the New Testament they have is great. You can search YouTube for Ancient Faith Whole Council. Note, obviously, I do not agree with or endorse everything said by all the recommended sites. They merely represent the best, the best, I could probably sound more, large assortment of very basic verse-by-verse -verse teaching I, I know of. Okay. If anyone has any recommendations, let me know. I admit. Yeah, yeah, most of these are people I generally agree with, generally. But you'll find out, like, just for instance, this guy is Eastern Orthodox. I am not. I won't become Eastern Orthodox. I never will. Unless, like, God, like, like changes my mind or something. I think, you know, I'm right there. But he teaches the Bible super well, verse by verse. And what he says, I learned about stuff from the Orthodox Church, but I learned a lot of stuff about the Bible. Very, he, he does a very good job, you know. So that's just one example. Let's say, uh, if somebody was uh, a Calvinist or a Lutheran, and I let's say I'm not, um, so that's fine as long as they go verse by verse and teach on a very basic level. All right, guys, go ahead and really close this time. All right, let's say a prayer real quick. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Holy be your name. You're wonderful and you're loving to us. And you're loved in yourself. The most awesome being ever. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Not mine, but yours. On earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Ruth was given daily bread. She was provided. In the form of a man named Boaz, in the form of a mother-in-law who loved her named Naomi. Naomi was provided in the form of a daughter-in-law. Forgive us this day our daily bread, Lord. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So please give me the strength to forgive others. Lord. Thank you for forgiving me. Lead us not to temptation, Lord, but please deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And Lord, you hear me say, for thine, it's yours, Lord. I use the old English, but either way, Lord, you have the kingdom. You have all the power. You have the glory forever, Lord. Amen. Bless you guys.